Hi, I'm Carl Azus, and we want to thank you for joining us for this special election edition of CNN Student News. The outcome was going to be historic any way you sliced it. But as the results came in, CNN projected Barack Obama as the next president of the United States. It was the longest presidential campaign season in American history, 21 months. But as it came to a close last night, the Democratic senator earned an overwhelming majority of electoral votes in his contest against Republican Senator John McCain. Soon, Obama will become the country's 44th president and the first African American to hold the nation's highest office. If there is anyone out there who still doubts that America is a place where all things are possible, who still wonders if the dream of our founders is alive in our time, who still questions the power of our democracy, tonight is your answer. It's been a long time coming, but tonight, because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America. And I call on all Americans, as I have often in this campaign, to not despair of our present difficulties, but to believe always in the promise and greatness of America. Because nothing is inevitable here. Americans never quit. We never surrender. We never hide from history. We make history. Thank you and God bless you and God bless America. Thank you all very much. Time for the shout out. When does the new president actually take office? Is it on November 10th, January 3rd, January 10th, or January 20th? You've got three seconds. Go. The 20th Amendment to the Constitution states that the term of the new president begins on January 20th. That's your answer, and that's your shout out. The presidency was far from the only contest on voters' ballots yesterday. It was election day across all levels of government, and the outcome of congressional contests changed the look of the country's legislative branch. We'll start with the U.S. House of Representatives. Members of the House served two-year terms. That means all 435 seats were up for election yesterday. It takes 218 of those to hold a majority in the House of Representatives, something Democrats won in the 2006 midterm elections and held on to with yesterday's results. Next up, the Senate, where 35 of 100 seats were up for grabs. Tuesday's results gave Democrats a majority there, too. But the big question now is if the party will win 60 seats, giving them enough votes to stop a filibuster, a political speech that's used to delay or block legislation. You can find the latest on that tally at CNN.com slash results. The Senate does have to replace two Democrats now, President-elect Obama and Vice President-elect Joe Biden. The governors of their home states will appoint their replacements. Now, one thing that might have slowed down some voters yesterday, massive turnout. Elections officials across the country predicted that Americans showed up to the polls on Tuesday in record-breaking numbers. And that's after more than 24 million people cast earlier absentee ballots. Voters reported waiting in line for up to five or six hours in parts of Missouri and Virginia. Listen to some impressions of the magnitude of yesterday's election. I have done this work since 1963, and our line was at 1.300 people. I mean, somebody arrived at 4 a.m. I've been coming out here for the last six years, and this is the, probably the biggest turnout I've ever seen. People were here very, very early. Uh, I got here about quarter to five. People were already uh, had chairs. They were sitting here. You need to find out if you're in the right place? Yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. Gilman. To me, this is the big one since uh, John Kennedy. Well, we've got a glass ceiling for, for uh, African Americans. Uh, we have a glass ceiling for women. Uh, one or the other is going to get cracked, uh, all to the good. Well, 
lot of excitement. Um, I feel like I'm part of history. Um, I'm looking for a change. I feel like with what's going on in the country, um, people are a whole lot more aware of what's going on. Um, people are, are, are more concerned about what's going on. They're taking more action versus just sitting back and watching what's going on. Time for a shout out extra credit. Who was the only U.S. president to serve more than two terms? Was it George Washington, William H. Taft, Franklin D. Roosevelt, or Bill Clinton? Another three seconds, go. Franklin Roosevelt served three full terms and was elected to a fourth before he died in office in 1945. That's your answer, and that's your shout-out extra credit. If you could send a message to the incoming president, what would you say? There's this teacher from Massachusetts who's hoping to meet the new occupant of the Oval Office and pass along the thoughts of a bunch of people when he gets there. But he's taking the long way, literally walking from one end of the U.S. to the other. When I was a kid, I read a book about um, someone who walked across America, and ever since then, and I've always been interested in it. Back in 2006, I was on a hike to walk across Massachusetts for no particular reason. About three days into it, I was invited to this town hall meeting um, in this little tiny town, about 800 people. The uh, citizens just seemed so uh, frustrated that the politicians back in Boston didn't quite appreciate what these guys here in this small town were going through. Uh, I began to think there had to be a way that I can amalgamize what I was doing, which was this walk, with what needed to be done. So um, I got a notebook and started asking folks, you know, if you could write a message to the next governor, whoever it's going to be, you know, what would you write? One of the most common questions I get is, oh, are you walking alone? Do you have like a support vehicle or, you know, is, you know, <laughs> or even like, where's your dog? And, uh, and, you know, I am walking alone, but you quickly realize on, on a trip like this, you know, on a trip like this, you're never really alone. Shock stories really sell. Uh, the violence and the crime and things like that. I have a completely different story to tell. I have a hundred stories of people, you know, going out of their way to be, you know, to be especially kind or generous or, you know, just hospitable to me. The biggest one that's come up is, um, is uh, gas prices. And then, you know, second, third, and fourth in no particular order, probably the economy, health care, and, um, and the war in Iraq. The American people have so much faith in their president, and um, they, give him almost, um, they give him almost superhero qualities. It's also the dear Mr. President, we support you. We're praying, you know, my family and I are praying for you like every day. So, you know, it's, it really is... Um, it, it really is moving. It doesn't matter how much money you're making or where you live, you know, it, it, we all want the same thing, you know. We all want better opportunities for our children. We all want to bring home more of our paycheck. We all want to feel safe, you know. It doesn't matter blue state, red state, black, white. We all want the same thing. Is this legit? Grover Cleveland was the 22nd and 24th President of the United States. Totally true. Cleveland won the presidency in 1884, lost in 1888, but was elected again in 1892. The ballots are in, but do you know who officially elected the new president? You would if you checked out our one sheet on the Electoral College, and you'd also discover why the Founding Fathers gave the responsibility to that group of people. Find this free resource and all of our Talking Democracy teaching tools at cnnstudentnews.com. Before we go, election fever spreads to the schools. These costumed candidates aren't really running for office. They can certainly promise change in their race, even if it's just their clothes. The assembly was part of a mock election at a middle school in Colorado where students weighed in on the White House hopefuls. Not sure that balloon popping was one of the president's responsibilities, but... This mock election did have some real results. Students voted to change the time of the school dance. Democracy in action. We'll be back in action tomorrow. For CNN Student News, I'm Carl Azuz.